Welcome to Season 3 on FBC Bernie's So That Missions Podcast. This is an encouraging place to hear how God is working in and around us. We know that He blesses His people so that they can bless the world around them. Join us as we discuss how to join God in all that He's doing. Why is God working in our life, our church, and our community? It's so that, through us, the world will know that He is near. Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Chad with FBC's So That Podcast. So glad to have you joining us today. Uh, We'll have an exciting uh, podcast today. We're talking about the Hill Country Pregnancy Care Center, and we have some people in the studio with us. We have Joy Stewart. She's an FBC member. How are you doing, Joy? I'm doing great. Uh, Joy has been the person that talks to me the most about the work that the Hill Country Pregnancy Care Center is pursuing, Uh, one of our best partners, and we're so excited you're here. And we have the executive director from the Care Center as well. How are you, Donna? Hey, I'm doing great. Great. So happy to have you ladies here. Um, Man, it has been warm. You guys noticed? Yeah, just a little. (laughs) Just a little. Slightly. Yeah. um, Some people, I had somebody talking last week about the brutal Michigan winters. (laughs) And I was laughing. I'm like, that's like the brutal Texas summers. (laughs) It is hot. But I did notice coming up soon, we have high next week, two days in the 80s. And some mornings in the low 60s. So I feel like Amazing. we're on the verge of the break, right? Where it starts to cool down and the, the fall is is on its way. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, tell me a little bit about yourselves. Um, I know that we're going to talk about the care center and all the things that God is doing there. But just uh, introduce yourselves. Joy, why don't you tell us just a little bit about you? We the, Many people in the church know you. Um, but some who don't, what, what would you like them to know about you? Well, I've been a member here for 13 years now, and um, I'm involved in the women's ministry here, and I'm also the church liaison for the Hill Country Pregnancy Care Center, which means that I all the information, all the fundraising, all the volunteer opportunities, I let the church know about all those things at the Pregnancy Center. I have two sons and two grandchildren right now and one more on the way. Oh, wow. And um, my husband and I are were very involved at the pregnancy center, and he went to be with Jesus a couple of years ago, And but I continue to do the work up there that he and I did together. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I hear uh, you and your husband referenced all the time in a variety of different capacities, and uh, your, you guys and your involvement and your dedication to both the Lord and to this church have been uh, a wonderful thing for us. And, and so we're so thankful, Joy, for your work among us, your work uh, with us, and your encouragement to us to keep pushing forward. And, and so it's, it's such a, a great thing. You're also one of my neighbors, so it's always fun to, to see you and, and uh, hear about the fun things that you're doing. And I, I love it that you're so involved at the Hill Country Pregnancy Care Center, and that's only one sliver. She's also involved in the women's shelter, and she's also involved in women's ministry. She's uh, everywhere I look, I find joy, and it's uh, it's uh, it's so exciting. So thank you so much for oh, thank just you. all that you do. Uh, Donna, tell us about yourself. Yeah, well, um, first off, I'd, I'd just like to say that Joy and her husband, not only were they one of the first people that I met at the Hill Country Pregnancy Care Center, but we became fast friends. They were my first friends here, and I'm so grateful for what God has given me in Joy and uh, in Jeff as well. And we miss him terribly, Mm. but so grateful, so grateful. So I love that. I love that. Joy brings so much joy into it our lives. It is a perfect name for her. <laughs> Every time I see her, that's exactly what I. If it's, her name was something else, it would have turned into joy. Right. So you know, uh, it was it. It just matches her to a T. So. Well, that's awesome. Okay, tell us about yourself, Donna. Oh well, thank you. Are you, you from Bernie? I am not from Bernie. I actually hail from the last thirty so years in Wisconsin. Wisconsin, Wisconsin, yeah. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and uh, before that, growing up, I moved around a lot. So I've lived uh, all over the country. I was the new girl for a really long time, you know, and everywhere I lived until I met my husband and we we settled down in Wisconsin. So, uh, and then. Uh, I had the opportunity and privilege of uh, moving to Bernie and being near my family, who 
Eventually, somehow we all became Texanites. I'm not sure. Texanites. Is that a word? It's just Texans. I'm not sure. Uh, we're, okay, we're the, sorry. It's just Texans. The Texanites. <laughs> I'm not really sh- Yeah, okay. Texans. Texans, So, yes, I've had the privilege of now being a Texan with my family. So, uh, that's been really fun. So, enjoying that. that that's enjoying awesome. this area very much. You have children? I have three children. I have um, one that is married, living in Indiana, a son that is serving in the Army in New York, and then my daughter, my middle one, is is home with us. Okay. Right now, so. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. And uh, just tell us, so how long have you been the executive director at the Pregnancy Care Center? Yeah, so I just had the privilege of finishing five years. I cannot believe it's been five years. You've been a Texanite for five years? A Texanite for five (laughs) years. I don't even know what to do with that. I feel like I just got here. I still feel like a new person, a new girl in town. Well, again, I mentioned brutal winters in in Michigan. I'm pretty sure Wisconsin has its own uh, brutal winters. Yes, very much so. And I have to say that is one of the things I've loved. I know the heat is hard. But I am not a winter girl, so it's okay that I don't have to go through those brutal winters right now. So. You would prefer the brutal summer over the brutal winter. Well, apparently so. We are here. <laughs> <laughs> you're here and you have air conditioning. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Well, we're so glad that you're here. And uh, we're so thankful that the Lord brought you and your family. Um, so let's talk about the, the Pregnancy Care Center. Uh, lots of ministries going on through there over the last several months. It's been great for me to get to know more about what you've done. Everywhere I've been in ministry, there's been something similar, um, mm-hmm. but they're never the same. And so, yes. um, you know, in the Valley, there was there was a couple different organizations that were engaging and caring for women who were going through um, pregnancies or unplanned pregnancies and, and various ways of help. Um coming here to the Hill Country and hearing uh, of the many ways that the Lord has been using uh, the Hill Country Pregnancy Care Center has been really encouraging. So um, tell us about the ministry, and then we'll just ask some questions along the way. Um, so so what is the primary mission of the, of, of the ministry? Oh, that's um, always my favorite question to answer. So, you know, it's really ministering to those who are facing uh, pregnancy decisions, uh, or just, uh, and they don't have to be crisis pregnancy, uh, but maybe a new pregnancy for someone. Um, they might be younger. They might actually be a returning, uh, returning to pregnancy after many years. We have clients of that nature as well, but, uh, it's just a joy to be able to be with someone, um, that has new life. Mm -hmm. And we, our hope is always to be able to direct them, uh, provide for them, listen to them, and offer them the hope in that and help them to unpack um, where they're at and what maybe the future holds for them and how to how we can support them in that. And so we really, we love doing that. We've been here for, this is our 36th year, right, mm-hmm. Joy? Yes, 36. I think in, this, in the community, which is really a blessing because we've grown with our community in, in during this time. And so just watching all that the Lord has done uh, through places like First Baptist here in Bernie, just how much support we receive from our community is is the reason we can continue to do it. Yeah. So we've been able to offer our services for free to everything we offer is free to our clients. And so that's only because um, so many people believe in what we do that we can keep we can keep that going. Yeah, that's super exciting. Joy, what are you going to add? Well, I was just going to say First Baptist was one of the charter churches um, all those years ago, starting the Hill Country Pregnancy Care Center. And it's just a great legacy that we have left, um, or we are leaving, with the Pregnancy Center that we continue to be involved with them. Mm -hmm. What's really, people will not understand this, but this is the third time today that I've talked to a different ministry leader that said, First Baptist was part of the original charter group that started us. One was Hill Country Daily Bread. I uh, met with Agnes today, and she was talking about uh, what a blessing FBC has been. And and then I just met with Leanne Jackson, the executive director of Grace House, uh, who was also talking about the how um, the the couple, the members that started Grace House years ago, and and all that that First Baptist. Like this church has just has a legacy. Mm-hmm. Joy, you mentioned it of 
uh, of members who got actively involved in pursuing solutions for needs within the community. And it's, it's neat to see that that continues. Even recently, there's new ministries that have been birthed out of the church, and, uh, and God continues to use uh, FBC members and, and members of many churches. But it's just pretty neat. To, today, just today, there's been three different organizations that we met with uh, that have, have said something similar. So that's, that's really neat. Um, I love that. Uh, so, so tell tell us um, um, uh, a little more. Um, you, you told us specifically uh, the mission. Um, I know that there's a, a lot going on there. There's a lot of churches involved in the development and support of the the care center. It's not just an FBC thing. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about how how that works. Um, how many people are involved in supporting the the pregnancy care center? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure I could give you a, a real a uh, specific sure. number, but I would tell you that it takes, it does take this whole community. It's many churches uh, that mm-hmm. support us like FBC does. We have probably 20 to 25 at any given year that are engaged in some fashion with us in our, either our church advisory council or have been uh, corporate partners or sponsors for an event or just the volunteer opportunities that come. Our church body in this community is really a great resource that's you know through those that have a shared faith with uh with us here at the hill country pregnancy care center that faith in christ is what ties us all together so give us the maybe the scope what, what are some of the different services that you guys provide to the community and uh, and what does it look like if someone comes in and is asking for help what what are the, the different things that you guys provide Yeah, you bet. And Joy, jump in anywhere. Uh, I know one of the things um, we have the opportunity to provide pregnancy tests, sonograms, and we also do STD testing and treatment. But we're also involved highly in the education portion for prenatal education, parenting education. We offer childbirth classes. And then most recently, we've really invested heavily in our ultimate fatherhood program. So we've met with men over the years as well, but we've really uh, wanted some uh, more specific involvement in the family unit, and that's been a real blessing to see. We just brought on Kirk Riggs, who is our fatherhood program coordinator, and he's really come in and and just, he has so much passion for this uh, in his own life that he's just really helped develop that piece. So we're really wanting to see how we can support the whole family unit we believe if we can get into even additional conversations with the family, not just with the women that are coming in, but potentially if the partner's involved, being involved with that person as well, or within the family, that we can make, uh, we could change lives for eternity. And we are every day, right? When we when someone comes in, our hope will be that we get an opportunity to speak about Christ with them. Uh, sometimes it's by permission, you know, we're not going to come right in out of the gate and and start, you know, asking them questions that they're maybe not comfortable discussing. But at some point or another, we know that the Lord has made that appointment as a divine appointment for us. And so we always hope that we can find that connection in their life that will help build an opportunity for discipleship in some way. They may start with us in discipleship, but that's why we need our partner churches like FBC, because sure. we can turn that into an additional discipleship opportunity for this woman, her child or children, as well as the father if he's engaged. But it could be parents and grandparents from there. And so, um, you know, just being able to to serve the family unit wherever we can, that is always our hope and, and being, you know, being Christ's hands and feet at the very least. And we hope to be able to share his words as well. So one of the things I think that would be great for our listeners to understand is that the the pregnancy care center is not just for uh, an unwanted or like you said, crisis pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Um, So you guys provide services. If, if any family was trying to learn more about it or, Mm -hmm. or understand their own pregnancy, they could come to you guys and learn uh, about that. There'd be opportunities, like you said, for the father, for a new mother, Mm -hmm. for a young mother, 
um, or even you said a, a mother returning to pregnancy. Yes. I mean, they're really, anytime you bring up uh, the word pregnancy, you've, you're talking about an intimate part of people's lives. Yes. <laughs> right. Oh, it's so true. Uh, and, and so you automatically are, are into heart issues. Mm-hmm. Just uh, if it's an unwanted pregnancy, a young teenager, she's terrified. She's trying to figure out what's the next step. What's the right way to do this? If it's a, uh, uh, no matter what, the word pregnancy again brings intimacy into into the right. scope, mm-hmm. and uh, and so <laughs> I just imagine the opportunity to counsel, to care, to love, mm-hmm. to disciple um, is probably never ending. Um, so how do you how do you guys maybe measure the scope of if somebody comes in and they need a pregnancy test, or um, how do you walk through dealing with these sensitive issues, intimate issues? Um, in a place like Bernie, one of the funny things we <laughs> laugh about, it, is my wife and I were new here, is like, this is still a small town in some ways. Like, mm-hmm. people seem to know what's going on around the space and what's happening. So how do you guys walk through in a, in a tight-knit community dealing with some of these things? Yeah, absolutely. Well, confidentiality is a huge piece of who we are I'm because sure. of that. I'm sure. So we, we try uh, right off the bat for them to understand that what we are here to work with them is going to remain confidential with us, right? We're, we're dealing, like you said, with intimate parts of a person's life. And so that just remains with us and them. Our goal then is to open up conversation for them to just be able to be, continue that vulnerability that they were so brave to come in with. Mm -hmm. Because for me, that's the inspiring part for me is when somebody is met with that point in their life, that's maybe not comfortable, but they took the step to come in and say, you know what, I think at this moment I could use some help. I yeah. could use some support. Not everybody is brave enough to say that or to do that. Sure. And, and including in a small town. Of course. <laughs> or maybe especially. Especially, In right. a small town. Yeah. And so I'm always inspired. So I, I, it, it's very evident when they come, when someone comes to our door and, and has these conversations. There's been a prompting somewhere. We totally believe that from the Lord, whether they know him or not. Um, He has surrounded us with prayer warriors for all the years we've been in business and friends like Joy and our volunteers. They're praying constantly for the opportunities where we can make a difference for in somebody's life. And I shouldn't even just say we, where Christ can make a difference in their life. And we have the privilege of being used in that. So, you know, you know, I don't know, Joy, if you, you know, maybe something you've experienced when you've been there before seeing that was um, that just touched your heart or something that you you know would share feel free to jump in on that well I think back originally I was a lay counselor when I first started there and then I had to go back to work and that wasn't you know that didn't work out quite as well but when I was a lay counselor we just had um, teenagers that would come in that were just really didn't have a clue And, um, you know, we had 15-year-olds that would come in, but we also, that same year, I remember a um, 36-year-old that I um, dealt with. So we have all ages of people that come in, and, um, you know, we give them the same love no matter where where their experience is from. But I just remember this 15-year-old being part of a family that did not want her to abort that baby. Mm -hmm. And, but she really thought that, you know, that was the only answer. And um, in the long run, she did not abort the baby. We prayed and prayed. And that's something we get occasionally from the uh, center. We'll get a text or an email that says, hey, we've had a situation where somebody, we call them um, abortion minded. Mm -hmm. Or someone considering abortion. Yeah, someone Mm -hmm. considering abortion. And, you know, no names, of course, are given, but just will you pray? Mm-hmm. And um, and I just feel that's really powerful that you've got all these prayer warriors out there praying for somebody who's considering abortion. And one of the reasons that I'm involved in the uh, in the pregnancy care arena to begin with is both of my boys are adopted. And one of them, his mother was going to abort him. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend took her to a pregnancy center thinking that they could get an abortion there. We (laughs) we never tell anybody if they call in and ask if we, you know, provide abortion services. 
um, they're never told that we do. Of course. And um, it was the same way with this situation with one of my son's birth mothers. And she got in there and just, she was not a Christian. And through that pregnancy center and then going forward to an adoption agency, she became a Christian and, Mm. and my son was not aborted Mm. and, you know, came to live with us at, you know, we, at shortly after birth. And, um, so I just, you know, I see the love of that. And one of the other programs that um, we're involved in is we are allowed to go out into the schools, both in Bernie and Comfort, and um, in their health, what do they call those like classes? Health, a health science connection or, mm-hmm. yeah. or you know, uh, puberty, <laughs> yeah. puberty review, wherever they're discussing that. Yeah. Um, the pregnancy center is the people actually teaching those classes, you know, every semester. And um, we're able, some of, with the older kids, we're able to show them a live sonogram. And it just makes it more real when you can actually see that sonogram. Yeah, of course. Um, So, and that affected my kids when they were in um, high school. They were doing it in the high school. When my kids were in high school, they got to see that. And they, I remember one of them coming home and go, Mom, we saw a sonogram today. And I was like, mm, yeah, that was the pregnancy center. <laughs> of course, they didn't realize. And and um, it's just a really neat program that we're allowed to do in the schools to, you know, kind of show them the, the consequences and, sure. you know, the way just the way the pregnancy can affect you yeah of course and and i mean our world today it's so so crazy right and and so quickly the whole conversation can be politicized and uh and yet when you return to the just the basic here is we want to pursue life we want you to see that there is life at every level in this Mm -hmm. whole this whole conversation and uh, I, I love that you guys have that opportunity. Um, tell us, you, you had mentioned before that you guys have a program uh, specifically for prevention, for awareness, yeah. uh, for families. You guys have done some of these in the schools. You've done some in the churches. Um, tell us a little bit about that program. Yeah. So when we're addressing students, it's going to look different than when we're addressing parents. And and like Joy iterated, we, we do speak to the what we're really doing at the school level is that we're talking to students about what what's going to take place in their <laughs> in their person. Sure, uh, they need to feel, and that's only going to be by whether or not the parents are going to, you know, get permission to go through this course with the teachers. It's well, it's well thought out. The districts that we work with, they're very hands on with the parents. The parents know what's coming. They understand, so they can opt out. They can opt in. Whatever whatever the case is, but of course, in that case, we're just reminding them in some cases, or for the first time, maybe um, some of these kids are hearing that these changes to their person are going to happen. And that's very normal. Yeah. And not to be afraid of the changes that are happening to you. And nor should they be, um, you know, certain thoughts are going to develop in that, that are, you know, of a nature that maybe you're not quite, you didn't realize was a part of your nature yet. Um, and so you're, you're, I'm trying you're so to delicately, diplomatic in this. You're doing I'm, such I'm, a great job, Donna. I'm trying to delicately say, you know, when these things come into our hearts and our minds as we grow with certain, you know, our, our bodies and our minds are changing and they're changing rapidly, rapidly at this young age. And they go through so much growth and development between the age. I mean, honestly, you're, you're getting 90% of your human development actually happens in the womb. And then Almost the rest of the development regarding hormones and brain capacity develop in those teen years. Yeah. So you're like, it's that fast paced movement from becoming a child to an adult. The kids aren't always ready for. And our hope always is that we get a chance to just let them know, listen, it's going to be a hard, potentially awkward moment for you and some some years here that you're going to have to face and make some decisions so we want you to be educated about what you're going to face because we want you to make an educated decision mm-hmm. about something that can impact you for your the rest of your sure, life. Sure. And that's why those conversations are so important, especially if you're talking to students who are considering becoming sexually active. It's really important that they understand the risks so that they at least have heard it so that when something that they're faced with something, they have something in their backpack to pull out and say, wait a minute, I think I learned something about this yeah. and, and start to rely on that. And yeah. then 
for parents, it's a it's a whole different ball game. We're talking to them really about you. You are the expert in your child's lives on all things, believe it or not. The studies were done with students and parents were asked uh, in a survey about who is the most influential person in their lives, in this in the youth lives. And the youth answered it with parents being at the top of the list. When parents answered that same question about their children, what they think they're, who their kids are listening to, they put themselves at the bottom of the list. The reality is your kids are hearing. They want to hear from you. They may say they don't. <laughs> yeah, of course. But the reality is they, they really, really do. And you are that expert. So it's just this encouragement in, we call it birds and bees, because that's the program that we use. And that's actually a platform you can purchase for your family. We love to do it as a group and are happy to do that for people that are interested. It works especially well for either pre-family or young families. That's, I would say, is the ideal audience for some of the curriculum we're using. Uh, but it gives parents that encouragement to say, you know, any questions that you might have not had answers to growing up or even in your adulthood, this material is fabulous. It just really reminds you of the miracle of who a human being is, how they arrived here on this earth, right? Uh, and then what it also helps you to put together your identity then, right? Help you to find your identity. You are, there is a real beginning to you. Uh, and there is, from our perspective in this Christian world, our identity began before we even got here, and the mind of God. Sure. And that's an important message within everything that we do that we hope is embedded in whatever someone hears. They're not an accident. Right. No one is an accident. Mm -hmm. Everybody is a purposeful, created human being with purpose and value. And dignity. And, and dignity right, this, and worth yeah. and you know, all yeah. of those things that we all need to feel about ourselves to, to, to connect to that, to find out who that identity, where am I placing my identity is what I'm trying to say. You know, yeah. like, what is it that shapes what I think about myself? Mm -hmm. Well, parents, you have a great responsibility, but a privilege there too. They are listening to you. You can shape your, help your child shape their identity through listening through understanding, through bringing them into conversations, even those uncomfortable conversations around sex. Yeah. <laughs> and they can talk about things that don't even have to do with that, that you're engaging with them <clears throat> even at two years old. You're talking about birds and bees. You're talking about <laughs> apples and seeds, you know, and you're not, you know, that in and of itself, the message is that any living thing comes with the pattern of the next living thing that will come from it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's already there, you know? Yeah. So. This isn't, this isn't something that just happened. This Correct. is something that's happening all the time in many, many places and you can see it all around you. 24 seven. I, I, I love it. <clears throat> you know, I, I think the world today is so saturated with voices mm -hmm. and typically over sexualized voices in our culture. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's so interesting to try to think through what's the right way to talk to your kids, the right way to talk to even young parents who are trying to figure out how to talk to their kids, um, or people who are in, in some sort of struggle, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a, young, a young mom trying to figure out what's this going to look like, what's this mm -hmm. going to be for me, and how's this going to... There's just so many things. So I, I think it's fantastic. I hope that you're, if you're listening today, what you're, what you're walking away from or with is that there's a lot of resources available through the Hill Country Pregnancy Care Center. It's not just for people who are going through a crisis pregnancy or people who are not sure if they want an abortion. Those places, those things are definitely available and there's care, there's opportunity there, but there's a lot more than that. And, uh, and so please do get to know um, uh, the, the ministry there. We're going to, in the, in our show notes, there's going to be a link to the website. Uh, they're going to have the phone number to the ministry, um, to the care center. So if you know anyone that is in a, it's in a place where they need some support, where they need someone to care, someone to listen, uh, someone just to try to figure out what's the next step, man, send them to their care center. That's, it's a really well-developed ministry right here in the Hill Country, specifically formed for these purposes. And, and like, a, like, like you've heard, heard us talk about today, it's, it's well beyond, um, just, um, the, the crisis pregnancy, which again are cared for very well, but there are many, many other things. When I when I toured you guys this facility, I was really excited to see the store. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And so one one thing that was really neat there is that as people go through some of these classes, they can earn... um, credits mm-hmm. is it? baby and bucks baby yep. baby bucks yep. and then they can walk into the store and pick out baby clothes or diapers or those kind of things and uh and so it really is such a well-formed uh organization um tell us uh, we're running out of time so just tell us a couple of your favorite stories um and maybe impact stories uh you mentioned one earlier of a young lady that made a decision to not uh, abort, but I think, uh, what, what are some, some of the stories that come to mind for you? Oh my goodness. It's so hard to put my finger on just one. Uh, there's so many good ones. And uh, as a matter of fact, you can see, uh, several of the client stories that, that were brave enough to share their story. And you can find those on, uh, our webpage that will direct you to our, our Vimeo channel that has several videos. And I, I encourage you, they're such encouraging stories. And, and you can really get it from their perspective. Yeah. I think that's really important. Um, from my perspective on you know this side, looking in on some of the stories, I would say, uh, you know, one of the one of the ones that was most recent, I would say, we had uh, a mom come in, and she actually was. Uh, this would have been her third, and she came in under you know difficult circumstances. And originally she had chosen that that really abortion really she felt like was her only option in her scenario. And that was the direction she was headed. And she was pretty adamant at the time when she came in. And we just continued to love on her and just hear her out, listen to what's going on. And she was willing uh, to discuss things. And, and that's always a we always appreciate that when someone's willing to just start looking at some things, look at all of the options on the table and just get an understanding from them what, where they sit and why this option sounds like a bad one or a good one. What does that mean? So we did have that opportunity with her, um, bless her heart. And so we talked about adoption with her and it was a long road in those conversations with her. And it, it was probably a three week period of time that we had met with her off and on in that timeline And we did connect her. We have such great referral partners. One of them is our adoption referrals. They are fabulous. And we can call them or the client right there while we're with them can call and have a direct conversation with the adoption providers, Mm -hmm. which is makes all the difference in the world when they can ask the very specific questions that are in their mind. We can tell them some things, which is great, but it's so wonderful to hear it right from them and to hear a story of someone they just helped. And so she took that route. And we are so, uh, we're so proud of her. It was a very difficult decision. She, that was not the route initially that she wanted to go, but we've, we've received word back and she has had that child and that child, it, there's a picture with her and the family that mm. adopted this little one. And it really, it's a tough thing to do. No matter what decision, we always say, if you're faced with a pregnancy that you weren't expecting, your life will change right at that moment. And it really it just does. Sure. <laughs> the changing already started. It already happened. You you received some news that changed something for you. So w- walking through that change, we always hope to be able to do that like we did with this client. It mm. was a it was a beautiful outcome. I will say not all of our outcomes look like that. Sure. And and that's um the other piece that I would love to mention today is the fact that when someone does choose abortion, even after we've had uh, long conversations with them and multiple visits with them, we always want them to leave knowing the same thing. And that is you came here for a purpose. We love you. We are not judging you. And should you have a struggle beyond this, if this is the decision that you make and you find that you're struggling with that decision to Um, to terminate your pregnancy we're here for you so if you need to talk to someone we we know you now we understand your scenario you can come back and we can have that conversation and that's the other thing that we do a lot and I I think it's really important for churchgoers to understand that uh, abortion has been around for a long time and I want you to know it is affected others around you have been affected by it you just might not know it yeah and so it's really important that when we have conversations on these difficult subjects, that we remind ourselves as Christ followers to show that compassion, to use compassionate language when we talk about these things, and to just have your ears and your eyes open to someone who might need 
uh, a listening ear who mm. might need support. And if you have had an abortion in your past and you aren't sure whether you've wrestled through where you want to be with the Lord on that or your family, maybe you can't tell your family or you think you can't tell your family right now, um, you can talk to us. We are going to listen and we have healing and hope uh, for you through Bible studies, through special uh, retreats that are, are for you, that people have been through before. They understand what you have um, faced. They understand the decision that you made, and they're here to tell you, um, let me walk with you. Hmm. And so that's a really important piece of what we do, too. Yeah. And I, I just I can't leave that unsaid because to me our our congregations i believe are where a lot of this healing and the change in this conversation will be most impactful i love it Uh, again the word compassion is such a good word um because often i think i get the the political climate of our culture today is so angry and forceful and frustrated with any of these topics uh, that oftentimes the church comes across cold and judgmental rather than compassionate and caring, uh, regardless of where you are in the process, before, after, in the middle of. Mm -hmm. It's just such a difficult thing. And so I appreciate that so much. Well, lastly, let me just ask this question, and this will be the last one. Uh, What ways can our church um, support what you guys are doing? Mm -hmm. Joy, feel free to answer that too, because she's oh, she's such a cheerleader for us, and I will tell you, you know what? Sometimes she knows before I do what we need, so um, I am fine with Joy answering that question. So, well, um, in a couple of weeks, we have our annual gala coming up, and that is on September nineteenth. We have a lunch seating at eleven thirty and a dinner seating at six p.m. And if you want to go to that, you need to sign up pretty quick, and. Um, Other than that, um, we want you to, you know, if you feel led to give, we especially like um, people who will commit to give monthly um, or on a regular basis, whether it's quarterly or whatever, um, or even just a one-time gift. Um, Your money is well spent and um, goes a lot to directly to our clients. And then um, also volunteering. Um, that's how I got started at the center, and um, and I just fell in love. Some of my very best friends are people who I've met through the center, and there is all kinds of things you can help with from, you know, actually counseling with the um, clients, which that's not for everybody, but that is a great thing to be to do. We have Nanny's Closet. We send out newsletters. Um, I now am on the... Um, fundraising and events committee and um, so we plan a lot of the events that you see whether they be community or whether they be fundraising Um, and that's a great thing to do Um, it's it's a lot of fun we're a fun group (laughs) and (laughs) um, you know if you want to if you attend First Baptist and want to come alongside me and help me um, just give out information to the church and, you know, help us um, promote things. Our women's Bible study here at First Baptist is fabulous. I give them a QR code or just a list um, a couple of times a semester, and I just get bags full of diapers and clothes and all kinds of things that they bring to us. Um, So it's not just money. It's, you know, there's there's things you can buy on Amazon or run to Walmart and get. Um, and those are some of the major things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. Uh, great job on that, Joy. So uh, in, throughout the year, then, the other one of the other fundraisers that we always enjoy, great participation for our, our uh, flower delivery fundraisers that happen both on Valentine's Day and Mother's Day, the two largest delivery days for florists. And our florists in town work with us so that we provide drivers for them. That means they can supply more flowers to more people, and they donate back to us the delivery fee for the flowers that 
people order. And so it's really a blessing to be able to uh, just see that many people come through. That's always a big one. So be thinking about that if you, and that's something you can do with your family. So you can, you can do it all together. You can do it with one, you know, maybe you want that special day with one kid in your family, right? That's a great event to do together. And um, so that's another event you can participate in. Uh, but yeah, I think Joy covered it really well. Um, when just to reiterate, those funds that people donate f- to us, they really do go directly to client care. And when we can expect the funding, like she said, regular giving is a help to us because we can actually say then, oh, we know that this is coming next month. We can plan ahead for this next uh, maybe growth in program or some new. Uh, program we'd like to introduce. When we know what's coming, then we can really make a good uh, strategic plan each year to to know which direction that we're going. So that's a, you know, I'm not afraid to tell you that's what we need. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, that's, you, it's not unique among any of Correct. the nonprofits that we work with. Uh, and so we're so excited to continue that. Just for those of you who <clears throat> maybe are not aware, First Baptist, we provide uh, monthly support to the Pregnancy Care Center. It is one of our, our closest partners, and uh, we are so thankful for your work in the community and, uh, and your work um, in this particular genre. It's it's a need that is, is evident all across our country, and so we're really happy that you guys are here and that we get to be a part of it uh, from the beginning. And so we're so thankful for Joy and all the work that you do to keep us connected and uh, many other church members from First Baptist that are very involved um, with the care center as well. And so, yeah, we're so thankful for you guys. Um, oh, we are. We've, we went a little longer than I meant to. So uh, <laughs> I'm excited again that you guys are here. If those of you who are listening today um, want to get involved, you can reach out to any of us in the office. We can connect you with Joy. Of course, you can connect directly with the Pregnancy Care Center. Um, you can go to their website. It's in the show notes. And, um, and yeah, remember what we're doing here. We're, we're, we're doing the So That podcast. Why does the Lord bless us? Why does he make his face shine on us? It's so that his salvation will be made known among all the nations. And, and so the work of the ministry here, it's, a, it's an overflow of all that God has done for us. And so if, if God has blessed you, then you can be a blessing to others. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Joy, oh, for being you. with us today. And uh, hopefully we'll do this again soon. All right. And thank you, First Baptist. We really appreciate you. Awesome. Well, have a wonderful day and God bless. We are so thankful that you joined our podcast today. We would love to hear any feedback you may have for us. Remember, Psalm 67 says, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth and your salvation among all nations. Don't forget why the Lord blesses us. It's so that we can be a blessing to those around us. Until next time, God bless.